hi everyone. Uh, I'm Dan Campo and I'm, uh, I'm going to introduce the speaker for today's lecture. Welcome to the third edition of the spring 2021 School of Architecture and Planning lecture series. And uh, before I introduce our speaker for today, I want to remind everybody that we have another uh, what I think will be a really interesting lecture next week, next Tuesday at noon, we'll have Giselle Major, who's the founder and chief strategist for Well Outside. And um, I think her talk will be really interesting and multidisciplinary. So again, that's Giselle Major, April 20th at noon. So join us next Tuesday as well. So uh, thanks for everyone for showing up and um, I'm gonna introduce our speaker now, um, Sonam Sahu. And so we're really delighted to have her here and we um, feel strongly that her work uh, speaks to the contemporary moment and uh, the, the critical situation we find ourselves as we uh, work towards um, meeting climate change goals. And, um, our speaker today, Sonam Sahu, is a climate change consultant who uh, works on various environment and climate change related projects uh, at the Univer National University of Singapore. She is uh, right now Baltimore based, by the way. She's an architect by training and has uh, a background and works at the intersection of disaster management, urban planning, and environmental studies. Um, she completed her PhD from Kyoto University in Japan in 2019. And um, her research is a lot, largely focused on uh, international climate commitments, some of that she'll share today, and how they can be integrated in a local level, right? We have, we have all these um, very large bodies getting together, different countries, and setting these goals, but who implements them and how do they get implemented? We're gonna hear a lot about that today. Um, and yes, and so I'm gonna introduce her. So welcome Sonam Sahu and to SAP and the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Dr. Campbell. Thank you so much for having me here. It's an absolute honor to be presenting my work in front of the uh, SAP community. Thank you so much. Uh, well, before starting the session, I'd like to share some information about this session today. So unlike previous talks, this is a research project and not a case study. So uh, this, is, this is about how uh, the international climate goals or the global temperature goal that we have from United Nations can be addressed or what they even mean for a local region, for a smaller region. Uh, this is my, this is the work that I uh, conducted during my PhD in Kyoto University in 2016 to 19. And it's work is really close to my heart. <laughs> so this is going to be very important for policymakers and planners and students of architecture and urban planning who are very interested in sustainability, environmental planning, uh, climate change, and uh, well, uh, okay, let's let's start with the session now. So let me first very briefly explain what the climate commitments really are. Uh, I'm sure everybody here has heard of climate change and climate target, Paris Agreement. Well, uh, let, let me just briefly focus on what exactly it is for people who might be very new to it or don't have much information about it, because this is the base of what we are going to talk today. So Paris Agreement is basically United Nations International Treaty, which requires countries to develop in a certain way so that the global temperature does not reach beyond or does not increase beyond two degrees anymore. So this is briefly what Paris Agreement is about. I will explain this in more detail later in the slides. 
So coming on to the work, this was con the, the project was conducted in Mumbai metropolitan region. Uh, can you see the whole slide here? Yes. All right, okay. I'm hoping that the top portion is visible because it isn't visible to me. Anyway, so uh, this is Mumbai metropolitan region. Uh, this is, it's in India. So you can see the location of India and world map and MMR, which is Mumbai metropolitan region is located in the state of Maharashtra located in the Western coast of India here. So this is a zoomed in map of Maharashtra while this is MMR like right, right here. So this red line marks the boundary of MMR, which is, uh, it has Mumbai city and Mumbai suburban inside its boundaries and part of three different districts also come inside the boundary of MMR. So it's a huge, huge, it has a huge area about 4,300 uh, kilometers square, roughly comparable to the area of the state of Delaware in the US. So coming on to what exactly the this topic is about. So the research project aims to uh, really find an answer to what does the international climate agreement mean for a local region? You see, it's the, the, the climate targets are something which the entire world is working on. It is talking about global climate targets, like global temperature reach and global temperature increase. So how is it related or how can it be related to local region and what does the, how does the climate planning, climate conscious planning can be integrated with the planning priorities of a region? See, uh, India is a developing country with competing priorities. There are, um, there, there is a huge need of infrastructure, whether it be electricity, housing, food, poverty. So there's a lot that the people of India already need. So with that goal, how can climate conscious planning be in, integrated with these separate competing priorities? So this is what the, or this is why the research uh, really started to be conduct, uh, like that the idea behind the research. So, well, the solution started with five very simple steps, uh, the way that every problem has to be solved. The first thing was to define the problem, which we already did. And the second thing was to find the, the, the current circumstances. So, now I try to find out what, uh, wait a minute, I can see my own screen. So, sorry for that. All right, better. So the first step was to find what is the status of climate change priorities in current planning of MMR. For that, I looked into the regional plans of MMR and well, uh, the regional plans of MMR are published by or administered by Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority, that is MMRDA. And until now, MMR has had three regional plans starting from 1973, and each of the plan is implemented for almost 20 years. So the most recent one is the one which was implemented, or well, planned, was planned to be implemented in 2016. This is a rough timeline of the three regional plans that we had. Uh, so coming on to the first part of the uh, project. So for analyzing how the regional plans are responding to climate change currently, I designed a new analysis tool, which was called Spatial uh, Climate Change Planning Index. Now, this was the tool that I designed for this particular study, but the advantage of this tool is that with certain modifications, it can be applied to any city which has regional plan or master plan or a kind of plan in place. So the CCPI is uh, basically about analyzing the city plans or regional plan for its mitigation and adaptation protocols. And mitigation is about greenhouse gas reduction, 
adaptation is about increasing the resilience and building vulnerability in the region uh, sorry reducing vulnerability in the region so ccpi started with a content analysis technique so each of the planning policy scheme any action which was there mentioned in the regional plans of mmr were scored from 0 to 2 now zero was given when there was absolutely no consideration of climate or environment in the plan one was given if uh, the plan or the policy addresses climate change or environment as its objective and two was given when the component had climate change or environment as a mandatory objective and had plans to implement it now with this uh, so the data for the ccpi was taken from the regional plans itself now here as you can see there are some components of the regional plan that uh, are here in the list the first column shows the components the sub components are in the second column so each of the component had number of sub components and with different objectives so each of these components and sub components were analyzed and given scores and then uh, using well using transportation i'm going to explain to you briefly how i scored or how i calculated the ccpi for each of the component so here each of the sub component of transportation was scored for mitigation and for adaptation separately as you can see here on the screen on the right side of the uh, screen this table shows that how each of the component has been scored and then there were some calculation done and on the uh, yeah so on the bottom side you can see that finally there are uh, there, there is a score given to each component in the end now the minimum score that a component can get is 0 and the maximum is 10 this means that if the component is working very well towards climate change and it is doing the best it will be scored 10 so 10 is the maximum score while 0 is the minimum score so similarly all of the components of this regional plan were um, scored and as you can see here in the slide each of the components mitigation score as well as adaptation score is written here so finally what i got was the entire regional plans final score was 2.65 for mitigation while 1.94 for adaptation uh, the figures down here show the scores in a graphical format for easy easy understanding so the first place here shows that if the ccpi is be, will be 10 which is maximum this is how the figure should look like but for the current regional plans the figures for something like this this is the one for the mitigation part and this is for the adaptation part so basically with these figures it is easy to understand which element or which component of the regional plan is doing great and which one has much scope for uh, you know working towards climate change mitigation or adaptation so let's take one example of um, like one of the components let's start with transportation so this pink one is transportation which is here so if transportation had a score of 10 should look like this but in mitigation it has score of something near 7.5 while for adaptation it is around 1.25 here yeah 1.25 so as you can see uh the component of transportation is lacking a lot in adaptation while doing comparatively better in mitigation so the advantage of these graphical format is that it is really easily understood by a person who is not technically trained in climate change or in urban planning and well this work has been published in city territory architecture so if you need more information about it you can go on to your Uh, paper and check it out now the next part was to find what is the current status of mmr in in the process of achieving the climate target so now we have started connecting climate target exactly with uh, the regional plans of mmr so here i try to find that what are the 
uh, CO2 would have been the uh, emission trajectory in MMR from the point when the first regional plan in MMR was implemented, which was around 1970, 1973. So starting from 1973, this graph here shows the uh, past emissions in MMR so from 1970 to 2012. And on the one on the right shows emission forecast of MMR starting from the year 2013 to 2043, um, 48. So this forecast was generated using the statistical analysis software using the linear exponential uh, model. So this is how uh, MMR's, MMR has been emitting. And here now we are going to see how MMR forecast, MMR's forecast is related to the climate change uh, targets. So I briefly explained what Paris Agreement was about, uh, Paris Agreement is about. It is about keeping the global temperature rise below two degrees. And well, Paris Agreement has another tool which is known as INDC or Intended National Determined Contribution. It is also called National Determined Contribution. So uh, NDCs are basically a tool for tackling climate change, which are like, which are the voluntary climate targets by the country, depending on their own strength, their own vulnerability, and their own climate ambition. So basically, NDC is a bottom-up approach towards climate target, while Paris Agreement is a top-down approach. Paris Agreement is one single climate target for all the countries for the whole world, while NDC is, NDCs can be different for each country, like for India, for US, uh, depending on their own strength and ambitions, a country can have its own climate target, which is communicated through NDC. So this is the difference between uh, Paris Agreement and NDC. Now, uh, the next thing is to find how these targets are related to MMR. So for that, um, well, as I said, Paris Agreement is about keeping the global temperature below two degree, uh, global temperature rise below two degrees. So this phenomena has been converted into the remaining carbon budget. Basically, uh, IPCC, that is uh, Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change, says that for keeping the global temperature rise below two degrees, we have a limited amount of carbon dioxide that we have available in, in the remaining in the atmosphere that we can still emit. So this uh, table here shows that, let, let, me, let me explain this part. So it basically says that we have uh, 1,170 gigaton of carbon dioxide remaining with us to stay below a two degrees global temperature rise with 67% probability. So this is the amount of temp, uh, this is the amount of carbon dioxide we have remaining to stay below the two degrees goal. And as per the NDC target, India's NDC target is uh, related to its greenhouse gas intensity of GDP. It say that uh, a 33 to 35% reduction in GAG intensity of GDP will be achieved by India to contribute to climate change, uh, uh, to contribute to tackling climate change in the world. So the next part is to see how does this relate to the regional plans? Let's see. So for, with, when, when there's uh, 1,170 gigaton carbon remaining for the whole world, how much of it is there for MMR? That's the first thing that we need to find out. So for this, there are different sharing principles proposed by um, scientists. So the first sharing principle that was proposed was inertia sharing principle. Now this principle is based on past emissions of the country. It basically says that a country should be allowed to emit uh, 
carbon em the GHG emissions depending on how much it emitted in the past. So basically, if a country has emitted high in the past, it should be allowed to emit high in the future as well. While if it has emitted very low in the past, it should be allowed only a few or uh, comparatively low carbon emissions in the future. But since this uh, sharing principle is very biased towards um, countries which have emitted very high in the past and does not give a lot of opportunity to countries which have emitted low in the past, this was not accepted by the whole world. Um, so the next principle, which was uh, which which was proposed by scientists, was the equity sharing principle. This is based on the population of the country. So if a country has very high population, it assumes that uh, all the people in the world get equal share of greenhouse gas emissions. So a country with very high population gets highest uh, emission share, while a country with low emission gets very low emissions for the future. Now, this is again very, um, it was very debated because the countries with low population get very few, very uh, less share of emissions in the future. And then came the blended sharing principle. Now, blended sharing principle incorporates a factor of uh, sharing index, which can be somewhere between inertia and equity. So basically it says that if a sharing principle is 0.5, inertia and equity sharing will be uh, accepted 50-50. So 50% 50 of inertia sharing is accepted and equity sharing is 50% accepted. But this was also very much uh, contrasted. And then another sharing principle was uh, proposed. Well, there are a number of sharing principles that are proposed, but the four considered here are the ones that we are going to discuss about. So the fourth one was inclusion sharing principle, which adds a factor of historical responsibility in the sharing principles. Now this historical responsibility can be in the form of debt or credit. So the historical responsibility factor is like if a country has emitted higher than average in the past, it owes or it is indebted to the other countries in future, while if a country has emitted very low in the past, it can take emissions from uh, the countries which have emitted more than average in the past. So this is the factor of uh, historical responsibility. It is based on compensation. So these were the four different type of sharing principles proposed by researchers that have been incorporated in this project today. So depending on these four sharing principles, I found out how much is the share uh, allowed to MMR depending on the four sharing principles. So this first column here shows the remaining budget for MMR, while according to the forecast that I showed you a few slides ago are here. So this is the predicted emissions. These are the remaining budget the remaining carbon budget uh, for MMR. So the difference in these two says that how much um, MMR is required to reduce the emissions in the future, which basically says that how much reduction is MMR, how, how much reduction is required in MMR to reach the Paris Agreement, which is about 40 to 46 percent. Like so. MMR needs 40 to 46 percent emission reduction to achieve the Paris Agreement's two degrees climate target. Now let's come to the second one, which is India's INDC target. So this target was related to uh, greenhouse gas intensity of GDP. Uh, well, the reason behind this is like India is a developing country and needs more develop, economic development to uh, fulfill the needs of its citizens. So India had decided to connect its climate change target with its economic development or economic activity. So for that, um, well, India's prediction in 2030, which is the target year for IADC target was about six, uh, about this. So this is, India's in like whole country's emission 
forecasted emission uh, emissions in 2030 now assuming that india's emission will uh, mmr's emission will be an equal share of india's emission in the past uh, and the share will be continued in future mmr's emission in 2030 are forecasted to be this and the difference between this say is that for achieving india's indc target mmr needs 16.8% emission reduction now comparing this with the amount reduction uh, the amount of reduction that it requires for paris agreement this is comparatively quite easy now that's quite uh, much evident here this figure here shows the summary of uh, the the work that was done until now so this pink area here shows the past co2 emissions of mmr this gray line shows the indc target for mmr while the these colored four lines show paris agreement's target and four different sharing principles so you can see how different indc target is with uh, the paris agreement's target now coming on to the next part of the work now we are uh, at the point when when i want to find out how climate change planning can be integrated in mmr's current planning structure how exactly the climate change uh, or what exact what we have done until now how is it related to the regional plans of mmr so for that well uh, they are, they can be they can be um, three different steps so first thing or the first most important thing that can be uh, that needs to be find out is that how a city or what systems in the city can affect its uh, climate or if i could talk in more technical terms how a city's greenhouse gas emissions can be affected so for this with literature study i found out different factors so basically it can be the geography of the city its economic base demography transportation layout consumer behavior waste management system its political and institutional character these are the factors can affect that can affect the greenhouse gas emissions of a city but all these factors cannot be enhanced or uh, impacted by planning priorities or planning components so the next step was to find how the planning categories or spatial planning parameters can impact these factors so the next part was to find uh, the intervention categories that are the the planning intervention categories that can affect greenhouse gas emissions of a city so these can be divided broadly into four different themes that can be planning transportation system energy usage and waste management which can be affected by these some of these uh, factors and vice versa and now uh, if we focus on planning planning can again be divided into sub categories or you can say parameters so here are the three parameters of planning that i uh, worked on then transportation energy usage and waste management so these are the sub parameters or sub categories of these planning interventions and now the third part was to find how these categories and parameters are related to the regional plans of mmr which was done using analytical hierarchy process and i am going to explain it briefly here so analytical hierarchy process or ahp is an approach for multi criteria decision analysis it is uh, basically a pairwise comparison of which of the two components is more important while we talk about uh, climate change planning so if i could come here pairwise comparison or ahp is like Uh, asking a question that if we are talking about planning and transportation system which one is more important is planning more important or is transportation more important coming on to this part is population density more important or is mixed land use more important and the score or the uh, the 
the response to pairwise comparison was given by sati scale which say that you give a score of 1 if both the uh, elements are equally important score of 3 when there is weak importance of one over another and so on so this is how ahp goes and there were different matrices formed for responding to this uh, uh, for responding to this question and as you can see here for the first level the comparison was done between planning and transportation system energy usage and waste management so there was just one matrix that was formed in level 1 while for level 2 there were four different matrices for level 3 there were 12 different matrices and uh, the components of regional plan were the statement that were being uh, that were provided as a question for the pairwise comparison so basically if you say uh, here pairwise comparison matrix of regional plan components under the urban function so under the urban part i compared all these 12 from uh, well i compared all these amongst themselves so there were 12 different matrices for this four here and one here total a 17 a set of 17 matrices gave me the answer which was some like somewhat like this so this table shows that for the planning category and for its three different parameters which are population density mixed land use and urban function what are the individual priorities of each of the component similar table was made for the other four intervention categories that is transportation system uh, waste management and energy so these four different tables have ind had individual priorities for all the four other 12 uh, regional plan components and then their global priority now adding up all the global priorities for each of the component i was able to find the priority of each of the component in climate change planning so this left side figure here shows the final weight of each component of mmr's regional plan in reducing greenhouse gas emissions of the region basically it says that Uh, transportation has 24.48 percent uh, weightage compared to other components when it comes to climate change mitigation and adaptation. The second uh, priority was to regional development strategy. The third one was to uh, climate control and so on. The figure on the right side shows the weightage of different parameters with respect to MMR regional plans. So this light sky blue color uh, line here is the trans uh, is the line for travel mode, which as you can see is highest in transportation, second highest in regional development strategy, third in environmental management. The second parameter was this purple one, which you can see is this travel activity. which is strongest in transportation second in regional development strategy and third in i guess shelter needs and strategies so basically this uh, right side figure shows the weightage of parameters while on the left side this figure shows the weightage of regional plan components now these two figures in uh, combination were an answer to how exactly the regional plan uh, of mmr could be related to greenhouse gas reduction or climate change so we found out that transportation regional development uh, strategy and development control are the three most prioritized components and when you compare it with the ccps score I found that transportation had a score of 7.5, adaptation of 1.25. So this uh, comparison says that transportation needs a lot of focus when it comes to climate change planning, and uh, currently it is it has got high score for mitigation, but it is it has a huge scope for work on the adaptation part. And comparing the regional development strategy. this has was got a very high weighted which means it needs a very high focus uh, on climate change planning front 
but it is not doing well either in mitigation or adaptation. It needs a lot of work. And the different parameters that could be uh, focused are travel mode, travel activity, mixed land use, etc. So basically, the work that I have explained until now is how a regional development plan or uh, any plan of a city, how it can be uh, related to climate change planning, how exactly we can find which element of a regional development plan or any plan can be, uh, how it can be uh, integrated in climate change planning and how it can be really related, what are the elements that have to be focused, we can find all that through all the process that I've explained until now. And uh, coming on to the next part, which is the final recommendations, which uh, I proposed using the study until now to, uh, to find how MMR can achieve the Paris Agreements target and India's INTC target. So for this, I designed three different scenarios. The fourth one is baseline scenario, which is business as usual say that no new climate policy be added to the regional plan and uh, everything goes as it is. The second scenario is the weak pledge scenario, which aims at India's INDC target. So the targeted reduction is 16.8%. And as per the NDC targets target year, the uh, year will be 2030. The third scenario is the strong pledges uh, scenario, which aims at the Paris Agreement's two degrees target and the emission reduction is 40 to 46%. That's the emission reduction requirement. So for these three scenarios, I propose to use the three most prioritized planning components uh, for the recommendations. That's transportation, regional planning development and development control. But for the strong pledge scenario, there was another, uh, some other recommendations given as well because there's a huge, huge gap between the two uh, targets. So coming on to the recommendations part, well, this table here shows very briefly what uh, the recommendations were. This is for just one part of transportation. There were four different tables and it was divided into government regulations and government incentives for both mitigation and adaptation. And since transportation can be affected by planning, the transportation system, energy usage, so these are the three different subcategories that I uh, use for recommendations. Let's come to the summary of the recommendations. So in transportation, the first and most important thing for climate change planning is to increase connectivity of places through public transportation and MMR because MMR is a huge uh, region and it is the economic capital of the country. So it attracts a huge population and there are different business districts. And there's a, uh, since the main city is very expensive to live, people come there for work and then travel to different places, which is very uh, common that happens in every uh, huge city. So, uh, it is really important to increase public connect, public transport connectivity in a region and in the smaller city or the main uh, economic hub, it is important to divert trip directions and avoid unnecessary trips. And I recommended that the road project should be implemented with some strong measures to manage traffic, manage parking, through road pricing and toll collection, uh, reducing number of parking spaces. And uh, in under the regional development strategy, some of the summar summarized recommendations were that big industries, the building should be required to audit their energy usage and be liable to pay carbon taxes, green taxes. And for commercial buildings, climate conscious planning should be a mandate. And then, uh, as I said, green taxes should be imposed to uh, the, the big industries and there should be subsidies for green construction. Um, then, so while we are here, let's briefly talk about Baltimore's planning. 
So I think Baltimore's planning is more focused on private connectivity. There are so many places, so many regions that are not connected by public transport. And if there is public transport, it is not very convenient. I think more than, um, well, it's basically very, I have personal experience, very, very, very uh, difficult to live on public transportation in Baltimore, which is something which is very disadvantageous for environmental planning. However, Baltimore has a very strong uh, road, road management, although it is more focused on private transportation, but this is the strength of the city that uh, being or having strong road management system in place, there can be a very strong and faster focus on public transportation than compared to uh, Mumbai metropolitan region, if I'd say. And well, I'm not sure about the carbon taxes and the green taxes that are uh, that are there in the policy here, but I'm sure students of urban planning and sustainability would be interested in knowing this. And again, about the clean, green uh, buildings or climate conscious planning in the buildings, uh, the students of sustainable construction planning would be more interested in knowing. I'll be uh, happy to provide any support if there is any question or any help needed. So coming on to the next slide, uh, assuming that all the recommendations were added to the, uh, to the regional plan of MMR, I recalculated the CCPI and well, it in the mitigation score increased from 2.65 to 4.36, while the adaptation score increased from 1.94 to 4.67, that was, uh, a significant increase and as you can see especially the transportation adaptation part has increased a lot there are there are still some which need a lot of improvement some of the uh, scores which were initially high were bit reduced in the uh, modified ccpi but that was because it was balanced somewhere else so basically if you see the whole picture this provides a better um, integration of climate change planning in MMR's regional planning priorities. So coming on to the next part, which is recommendations for the strong legal scenario that is aimed for the Paris Agreement's two degrees climate goal. So in this part, there were stronger recommendations. So trans in transportation part, there was uh, like, that advanced technology would be recommended. And uh, currently MMR is more a planning department and there is no transportation department in MMR. So I recommended that MMR development planning authority should also integrate or also have another transportation department because transportation is a huge uh, industry or the sector in MMR about 70% of the people use public transport in MMR, which is amazing because it uh, affects mitigation a lot. It, it mitigates climate, it, it mitigates greenhouse gas emissions a lot. So this is a huge sector and if it is focused more, it can perform even better. So this was one of the recommendations. And since it is, MMR is located on the sea coast, uh, I recommended that inland water transportation should be explored more. And there were some recommendations about regional development strategies, like green certification, coastal protection through uh, soft solutions, etc. cetera. Um, then development control. Okay, so another important thing that MMR had was it has number of pollution control boards, which are very actively engaged in monitoring the air pollution status of the whole region and they are working very actively on that so uh, well because pollution control elements are very strongly related with greenhouse gas emissions and uh, uh, the elements of climate change so i recommended that mmr should have a, a collaboration with the pollution control boards in the region and the PCBs or pollution control boards can be engaged to monitor climate change indicators as well. And uh, 
big corporations that are there in Mumbai or the whole region should be involved in uh, the process of achieving climate targets. Uh, fortunately, this is already there. Uh, the, the system is already existing here in Baltimore. This is another advantage that Baltimore has. So, uh, well, uh, this, this is something which is really uh, happening much, much better here in USA. So, uh, also climate change, there is no climate change team or research team or a group that is working on climate change in Mumbai Metropolitan Authorities, uh, the Development Authorities team. So, that was another recommendation. And since this is again a developing country, so there's always a economic perspective added to a country which is uh, which has a number of other priorities and then there's climate change priority added. So for that, I recommended using different uh, tools, economic tools of Paris Agreement like Green Development Mechanism, Admission Training, which are not still very famous in the sub-national platforms in India. So this is something and then again uh, assuming that all these recommendations are integrated in the regional development plan i recalculated with ccpi and this time it increased from 2.65 to 8.04 for mitigation and for adaptation to 8.06 from 1.94 which is as you can see uh, here in the graphical uh, in, in the graphs, it is a huge increase in the scores. So this is what it was mostly about how uh, climate change planning can be uh, integrated in the planning priorities of a region. And other than that, there were some of the recommendations like, as I said, in the start, regional plans of MMR are implemented for a span of 20 years. And with that regional plan, since it is a huge region with uh, with number of cities inside it, there are many villages, like thousands of villages and number of cities, uh, districts. So what I recommended was that each of the city has its own master plan or development plan. And that is uh, related to, a, instead of a regional plan, a concept plan that is uh, provided by the MMR's development authority, which acts as an umbrella plan for all the separate master plans or development plans of the region. And this concept plan is updated every five years because recently the technology has been advancing at a very fast pace for a very fast pace. And 20 years is, I think, a very long time for a plan to be updated. So other than that, uh, MMR, as I said, has a huge local train network used by 70% 70 70 of the people. Then there are seaports, airports in MMR. But again, these are few sources of emissions, but this emission data is not used in the, climb, in, in the spatial planning in MMR. So there should be a very strong relation in the two, uh, in, in these two different elements. Uh, the other things were that in the regional plan, there were some elements which were, or there were some components which were conflicting with each other and that has to be resolved. So ultimately it's, it all comes down to spatial planning priorities of a region. If climate change is a priority, there will be some uh, actions taken towards climate change. So main thing is to keep environment and climate change as a priority in mind when we are developing planning policies. So well, planning for climate change, it can have multiple approaches. Some approaches have some disadvantages for some other uh, approaches and can be conflicting at times. So you now scoring a CCPI of 10 is really challenging for a, for a developing region. But this, uh, this project proves that there's a huge scope in regions for responding to climate change planning and supporting the country in achieving the national and international climate targets. And with this, uh, the biggest contribution of this 
project was the CCPI tool, which is, uh, well, it is an advanced tool which can be used, which is which can be used by any city which has its plans in place and making slight modification in the elements of CCPI, this tool can be applied to any city. And similar type of studies, if they are performed in different smaller cities and equal regions, they can contribute a lot towards climate responsive planning. And this basically, this project shows how global problem can be tackled at a local level. And the end, I just want to say that Climate change education, its data, information, it should be uh, put in place with the institutions and uh, government organizations in total and ensuring that state-owned facilities, professional associations and regulation, they have sufficient capacity to use climate change projections and facilitate partnership to uh, better understand how the infrastructure has interdependencies and how they can use the climate data to uh, find their own future goals and uh, simultaneously contribute to national climate targets. Uh, as, as planners and policy makers, we need to align the policies of spatial planning with the climate targets, that is international or national climate target, we may have our own local targets, and we need to see that we are supporting uh, the government in making efforts towards climate change, and we are making the infrastructure more resilient and less vulnerable towards climate change disasters. Thank you so much. Um, we have a few questions in the chat, if you're ready to take them. Definitely, yes. Okay, um, so Tina S. was asking, do the results of your study consider electric vehicles which will reduce emissions or is the study based on existing emissions of present vehicles? Yes, yes, definitely. So uh, at the time when I was conducting the research, the issue, the uh, data from uh, current vehicles was taken into consideration. However, the data which I have used uh, let me share that slide here. Right. So this data that uh, this graph that you can see here, the first one is from the entire uh, CO2 emissions. So basically it takes into account all the emissions from the region and not just transportation. However, transportation was separately taken into consideration. The, the graphs are not sh uh, shared here. So the data from electricity, transportation, fugitive emissions, that were also taken into consideration. Yes. Thanks. And electric vehicles are not very, very common in MMR or in India. So uh, the, the vehicles that depend on fossil fuel uh, as, as uh, the you know, fuel uh, were considered, yes. Thanks, awesome. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Um, we're a small enough group, I think you can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question if you'd like to, or as always, you can type it into the chat. Sure, I have a question. Um, so I think it's really great that 70% of um, people in MMR use public transportation. Um, I was curious how COVID has affected that and what um, you speculate will happen moving forward with public transportation as well as um, emissions uh, um, in involving transportation. But thank you so much for this question, uh, Laura. And yes, COVID has affected this uh, public transportation in MMR very, very immensely. Uh, so at the time in the, well, last year, in the time of April, there was a huge lockdown in uh, MMR to prevent COVID uh, transmission through local transport, through public transportation. But that very badly affected the economy because as I said, 70% of the population use public transportation. However, it still, like uh, Mumbai was, Mumbai still uh, is one of the cities that is having huge uh, surge of COVID cases. So yes, public transportation was a major, uh, you can say, reason or one of the elements that affected the transmission of COVID. But uh, now there are many studies and many uh, projects coming up which are integrating COVID 
planning with the public uh, transportation planning in MMR, and uh, there are many projects that are working towards it. However, I, I'm telling you, it's really difficult because there's huge population currently. Uh, the inf the transportation infrastructure is working on working four times more than it is supposed to be working. It's it was it's built on uh, say to take a, a load of eggs, but it's definitely working more than that, like much much higher than that. Clean, uh, muted. Oh, Just saying something. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have another question? Maybe just try the general um, customer service. Um, you can go ahead and type it in the chat if you're having trouble with your audio or. Give everybody just a moment. I think it was a lot of information to absorb because there's there's a lot of science, great science here. So <laughs> people's brains are probably just taking everything in. So, Sona, maybe you can tell us a little more since you're you're new to Baltimore. Maybe you can uh, and just and I know you hit upon this a little bit in the uh, in your lecture, but what what should Baltimore, the Baltimore region be doing? And I don't expect you to have the answers of how to do it, but but speculate a little bit on a, a kind of strategic direction for the region. Definitely. So about Baltimore, the, the one good thing is that Baltimore has a comprehensive climate change plan and a disaster management plan in place. Uh, how that responds to spatial planning, there's, there's uh, a few elements that are related to spatial planning, but the comprehensive uh, plan that for climate change planning are already in place. And uh, one thing that can be uh, improved or maybe I can I could say worked upon is uh, definitely the public transportation because as far as I know, there is a huge uh, emissions. The, the Baltimore has huge emissions when it comes to transportation sector and energy. So these are the two sectors which are most which can be most focused upon while working on climate change planning. So the spatial planning or the planning department can really focus on transportation, making more uh, like making the public transportation more convenient and increasing the trips, increasing uh, uh, or diversifying the modes of transportation, adding more buses or trains, adding more metros that will really help upon in you know mitigating the emissions of the city. Thanks. <laughs> um, do we have any other questions? Um, it's about uh, one, so we should actually be wrapping up. Um, oh, we have one more question from James Davenport. What should universities like Morgan State, hold on, sorry, what should universities like Morgan State be doing to play a role in climate change and preparing students in this department? Thank you, Jean, that's a really nice question. And I'm uh, happy to see that uh, universities are really interested in this kind of topic. There are many universities already who are working towards this goal. Uh, there is this initiative which was in, like before America entered into Paris Agreement very recently, there was uh, we are still in initiative and it's like a group of uh, businesses, government institutions and universities which are working on climate change on how uh, this subnational, uh, these subnational associations can contribute to climate change. And now after America has entered Paris, re-entered Paris Agreement, I'd say. So when America has re-entered Paris Agreement recently, the initiative has changed to we are all in and i think you can check this initiative and you'll definitely find uh, ready answers to what universities can do and personally i think there's a lot that students can do as uh, 
by you now reading about this more and integrating environmental planning or climate change related planning sustainable construction practices in what they are doing in their own projects so uh, you have internships you have different projects that you're doing if you integrate this uh, climate change approach in your own projects and start uh, educating yourself and others in this in this direction that will be a huge help in climate change mitigation uh, and as i said this was uh, a research project so if you are very interested in this kind of project you can in fact have your own dissertation in something like this probably how baltimore planning can uh, integrate climate change planning or what else can be done uh, in each of the sectors like transportation or real estate planning there are some subjects i saw that morgan street is teaching in uh, that are quite much related to what climate change planning is about but if there are there is more focus on climate change education which is currently really lagging in the entire world like climate change per se is not the focus of most of the uh, courses or most of the uh, uh, education systems in in the whole world so this is uh, like climate change is taken as an extra subject or there's just one or two lectures that happen about climate change but if that is taken as a focus that will be a huge huge help for us and for the future great answer thank you um and thank you for the whole lecture. Um, I think we unfortunately have to go ahead and wrap up now because I know people have work and class and meetings. Um, Dan, did you want to say any final words? No, I just want to thank Sonam. Thanks for sharing your uh, research with us. And we know this is really a, a critical uh, research and something that needs to uh, be disseminated widely. So we appreciate you coming and, and sharing your work today and we wish you great luck and, and we look forward to another opportunity to welcome you to Morgan. Thank you, Sona, and thanks everyone for showing up. Thank you, Dr. Campo. It was absolute pleasure to be presenting my work. And if there is any more questions or suggestions you'd like to have, the students might uh, want uh, my phone number and my email is right here on the screen and you can approach me.